Hey, I walked into a construction site the other day and there were these three Samoan scaffolders having a bit of a break. So we kind of had a chat and I asked them. I said, hey bro, how come it's so bloody hot today? You guys are still working. And whenever I see scaffolders, they're always islanders, big strong guys. And they're up there doing scaffolding in all sorts of weather. And I said, how come? And you know what they said? Collectively, they came back at me and they said, it's because we know how to work hard. Everyone else in the construction industry is too soft. And we are the only ones who are the hard ones. That's why we are scaffolders. Now, I don't know how true that is. You might have some feedback. But the interesting thing was, the next thing they asked me was, they said, hey, how do you get rich? So I said, why do you ask? Well, they said, we work bloody hard, but none of us are rich, right? So what's the secret to getting rich? Now, I thought about it for a short while, and this is what I said to them. I said, the secret to being rich is, number one, you've got to work hard, and that's bloody hard. And they nodded, and they said, well, what's the next step? Well, I said, the next step is to work smart. So if you know how to work smart, then you can get rich. But I said, the most important thing is initially, you've got to work bloody hard because you can't go the next step and work smart until you know how to work hard. Now that's food for thought. You've got to work hard before you can think of working smart. And I think this is one of the things that are lacking nowadays that people prefer to go straight to working smart without having to go through working hard. And working hard means that you really need to go real deep into things. And that means getting the foundations right. Much like a big tree, if the roots aren't deep enough, when the wind blows, the tree is gonna fall over. So you really have to go deep before you can go broad. In other words, work smart. So what I'm gonna do is create a whole series of masterclasses about going deep because it's in going deep that you learn the fundamentals of roofing. Now, I got an email from John this morning and he sent a whole lot of photos and he sent a link to a video. Now, his question was, I'm really interested in roof ventilation because you did a whole series of, about roof ventilation. And what I found is, I found this Bradford vent, which is solar powered. It's a solar vent made by Bradford. And I've put this vent onto my roof. Uh, but there's a few things that I am not quite sure about. So I've got to send you a series of pictures and a link to the Bradford video. So now I'm gonna show a short snippet of this video of an, an expert, a roof expert, installing a vent. And see if you can tell me what, in fact, he's doing wrong. You know, potential health issues. Oh, it's nice and shiny. Check out that, as soon as it's in the sun, bang, full power. Whoa, I can actually feel, I can feel the air coming through that. How great is it, yeah. That's really powerful. That's a lot stronger than I thought it was gonna be. Absolutely, the solar panel. when it's in the sun, full flow rate, pulling that hot air out of the roof space, keeping the roof space nice yeah. and cool. That is significantly powerful, more powerful than I thought it was gonna be. That's amazing. It is, we might put this guy, about 900 from the gable, Yep. just in this little area here. Okay, no worries, so we'll pick a tile then, shall we? Now I've cut a hole in the sarking. Yep. Put your hand over here. Feel the hot air coming out of the roof space. Wow, you can actually feel it puttering straight out of there. Absolutely. When this hot air rises, this is just going to assist in pulling all that hot air out of the roof space. That's unbelievable, because it's not even yeah. a hot day today. Absolutely, yeah. Wowzers. Well, do you want to help me lift up this tile? Yeah, no worries. I'll lift up this guy. And we'll just slide it straight under. So you want to 
what, a dab of silicon down each side just to lock it in? Yeah, I just run a bead of silicon down the outside edges just to seal it up. Yeah. And we're good. Now, what happens here then with this bit? Because obviously that would be nice to mold it to the tiles. Any tricks for that one? So I'm just going to put a little snip here. Yep. And a little snip here. Oh, yeah. And then mold I'm just going to bend it down. Yeah, great. It's whisper quiet, but it's so powerful. Absolutely. This will be the perfect solution to pull all that hot air out of the roof space. Mate, your lake looks so easy. Oh, thank you. How good is it? I reckon it's kind of like the next step in the evolution of roof ventilation. What do you reckon? Absolutely. As a roofing expert, I can't stress the importance of good roof ventilation, whether it be in the summer, pulling all the hot air out of the roof space, or even in the winter to reduce mold. Yeah. And did you see on the front, Walt? It's got the blue butterfly. I did. I didn't notice that, actually. We're obsessed with them on our show. Oh. So that's the Sensitive Choice Program with the National Asthma Council of Australia. So. Now, any roofer out there who knows about putting a vent in knows that this is not how you install a flashing because the way it's been installed on this video is guaranteed to leak. The flashing should be installed on top of the tiles, the two adjacent tiles, rather than underneath because if it's installed underneath, the water goes under the flashing and then straight into your roof cavity. The flashing should sit on top of the two adjacent tiles and not underneath. So I don't know how this guy became an expert in installing vents, but this roof is bound to leak. And this is an example of people doing things that they don't know about the fundamentals. They haven't gone deeply enough in how a flashing should work and they've called themselves an expert and they've put it in incorrectly. And, and it is what I call misinformation because if you were to install the solar vent the way he did it, then you'll have an instant roof leak. Now, what the video also doesn't mention are two critical things. There is a strap that holds the vent down onto the roof so that when the wind comes, it doesn't blow the vent off. So nowhere on the video does it show that this strap's going to be installed. And the critical thing is that you need inlet vents. You need inlets for the outlet to work. And the video simply says, put this vent in and you shall have a cooler roof cavity, which is incorrect. So this is going to be a little bit of a masterclass on roof ventilation. Number one, the most important thing is that if you're going to expel air from the roof cavity, you need air to come in. So if there's no inlet, it's useless trying to blow air out. You need fresh air to expel the stale air. Then you get circulation and then you get ventilation. Without that, nothing works. Step number two, you need to know where to put the ventilator. Now, hot air rises, obviously, so the ventilator has to be installed as high up the roof as possible. Now, step number three. What is it, is it that you're trying to ventilate? You are trying to ventilate the space in, under the roof. Now, the space under the sarking is where the air is that you're trying to expel. And ventilation is drawing fresh air in and expelling the stale air. Now, ventilation means that you are exchanging air. It doesn't mean it's going to make the roof cold, but it does mean that as you ventilate the roof cavity, the air exchange means that you are usually drawing in the surrounding air and replacing what's in under the cavity. So whether it's warmer or it's cooler, you're actually changing that air around the cavity and it's just ventilating the cavity. If you want to keep your house nice and cool or warm in the winter time, it's not the cavity ventilation that you have to worry about, it's how efficient the ceiling insulation is. Because on the ceiling level is the critical surface that's got to be insulated. So insulate your ceiling before you even think about ventilating your roof cavity. If the point is to keep your living area nice and cozy. And lastly, you need to know how water travels on the roof when it rains. So when you put in a ventilator, it doesn't really matter what sort of ventilator, you need to know how water will travel. And once you know how water travels, then you can install the flashing correctly 
because you understand where the water is going to go and you put in means so that the water does not go inside your roof but goes outside your roof and gets shed down the roof. So you need a real deep understanding of how water behaves on a roof. So the lesson is you really have to go really, really deep into whatever you do so that you achieve some measure of success. And then once you've got it under your belt, then you can start to think smart about smarter ways of doing things. So you've got to go deep before you can go broad.